to learn today. That's great! For today's learning adventure, you should be able to demonstrate understanding of a short story, analyze a short story by identifying its basic elements, and utilize multimedia in sharing lessons learned from a short story. It's review time! Are you ready? In order for us to test whether you really understood our lesson from our previous discussion, I wanted to arrange the jumbled letters. These are words that you can associate from our lesson last time. Let's begin with our first word. Second word. Third word. Fourth word. And for our last word, let's check your answers. We have fiction, poetry, drama, flash fiction, and DJ novel. Good job! During this pandemic, I know that most of you are hooked into either watching movies or reading stories. Can you name some of your favorite movies or stories? Those are really interesting and here are mine. These movies or short stories, they contain elements. And for today, let us discuss these elements. The first element of a short story is character. A character in a short story is a person or animal who takes part in the action of the story. Do you know the two types of characters? Let me show you some pictures. Who are they? Do you have any idea? Correct! They are the protagonist and antagonist. Protagonist is considered as the main character or the most important of all of the characters. Antagonist, the character that challenges the main character. They can be a person, nature, or society. Where am I? Correct, I'm in a theater. I changed my location. Do you now have any hints about our second element? Correct! It's a setting. Setting. A place and time when the story happens. Let me show you some examples. From the series Money Heist, the setting is The Bank. And from the manga series One Piece, we have The Wano Island. Oh, hi there! Can you see that mountain? Yes, and it reminds me of another element of a short story, which is the plot. Plot. Series of events or sequence of the story. Let me show you a diagram of a plot. First is the exposition, or the beginning of the story, followed by the rising action. This is where the conflict starts to build, followed by the climax. This is the peak of the story. This is where the most exciting part of the story takes place, where discoveries and mysteries starting to unfold. Then we have the falling action. 
This is where the conflict starts to resolve. And the last one is a denoma. This is the ending of the story. The solution takes place. Oops! Do you see that? It seems that they are arguing. Oh, maybe they just have some conflict. Mm, did I mention conflict? <laughs> yes, and it's another element of a short story. Conflict. Every story needs to have a problem, and the problem is called conflict. We have six types of conflict. We have person versus person, character conflicts whether between heroes and villains or sparring lovers, person versus society, a character is victimized by the society, person versus nature, for example, when two lovers are separated by a hurricane. So the antagonist is the Eurican, which is an example of nature. Person versus technology. Characters face the ominous results of science moving beyond our control. Person versus self. Conflict between a character and their inner struggle. Person versus supernatural. The source of conflict is supernatural. The next element of the short story is the theme. This is the central idea or the general truth. This is the author's message to the readers. The last element of a short story is the point of view. Who is telling the story? We have three types of point of view. First person, second person, and third person. First person, the main character is telling the story. Second person, the author or narrator is telling the story to you, the reader. And third person, the author or narrator is telling the story but is not part of it. It can be omniscient or limited. So now, I will read a story to you and I want you to identify the elements of a short story. Our story for today is Pilandok, the Guardian of the Forest, retold by Victoria Añonuevo, illustrations by Cora D. Albano. Datu Usman was furious. His men had complained to him that Pilandok now lived in the forest and forbade the cutting of trees without his permission. What? shouted Datu Usman. Who gave him the power to be the guardian of the forest? At once, he ordered Sabandar, the brave and fierce Sabandar, to capture Pilandok. Pilandok learned about Datu Usman's order. He thought quickly, then laid a handkerchief across his left eye and sat beneath a branch where a big snake slept sent by the Datu arrived. When he saw Pilandok, he asked, Are you Pilandok? Yes, sir. Pilandok answered calmly, But there are many other Pilandoks here. I am the Pilandok who is blind in one eye. Perhaps the one you look for can see with two eyes. If what you say is true, challenged Sabandar. Why do you sit in the shade? I am here to guard the royal sash, sir. Pilandok answered, and he pointed to the sleeping snake above him. The sultan of the forest would be very angry if I were here to leave the royal sash unguarded. Oiled serpent on the branch made Sabandar's eyes gleam with greed. The royal sash is now mine. He declared as he reached out for the snake, intending to wrap it around his waist. No, please, sir, protested Pilandok. The sultan of the forest will kill me if I lose the royal sash. At the faint pleading of Pilandok, before long, the snake woke up. It wound itself tightly around the warrior and crushed Sabandar's bones in a deadly embrace even more angry. Take some men! He ordered the fearless Samusun. 
Kill the guardians of the forest! So Musun came upon Pilandok underneath one of the trees. Again, Pilandok denied that he was the Pilandok who was the Datu's enemy. Why are you here? inquired Sumusun. I am here to guard the royal gong of the Sultan of the Forest. Pilandok answered and he pointed to a huge beehive. Eagerly asked the fearless Sumusun. When you beat on it, explained Pilandok, beautiful slaves come out and do your bidding. Is that so? Sumusun's eyes widened in amazement. He tried to grab the gong stick from Pilandok. Oh no, please sir, entreated Pilandok. The Sultan of the Forest will be very angry. If someone else uses his royal gong, he will kill me. So I let him find you, advised Sumusun. Go and hide. Yet, at once, Sumusun beat on the gong. As might be expected, the beehive broke in half and let loose a thousand angry bees. They stung Sumusun and his men until their bodies were swollen. Were you able to identify the elements of the short story? That's great! Now, for your additional activity, I want you to create a short skit of your favorite story, then identify its element at the end of your video presentation. I hope that you learned something new today and see you on our next learning adventure.